Um, did you watch Wimbledon today? Um, no, I didn't. I was too busy being productive, writing you a song, and I watched the second half of the Portugal game because what happened was I was doing stuff and I, I listened, and this is really tragic, I listened to Radio 5, although I want to talk about Radio 5 in a moment because I think it's an interesting thing. Um, and normally when I'm doing stuff I won't watch it because it's too tempting. I could actually, if I was not gainfully employed, I would sit and watch every football game because there's three a day at the moment, it's football heaven. I'll watch any old football shit. Um, although, having said that, what was the one I was really bored? England, Algeria, I couldn't bring myself to watch it. We made dinner, we made this big show of getting home early on Friday night to make dinner and watch it and enjoy it and blah blah blah. And I'm just, I mean, we thought you think about going to the pub for that game. I'm so glad we didn't because it was literally like having your teeth pulled. It was so painful. At one point, I just had to sort of sit on the sofa with my back to the telly and eat my dinner and just, I couldn't believe how atrocious it was. Um, so, no, I haven't watched any football. I haven't watched any tennis today, but I did watch the second half because as the commentating was happening in the second half, I was like, I can't believe it. It's like a goal a minute. And I do like Ronaldo. I've got a soft spot for him. Because, because Ronaldo, not in a kind of fancying way, as a straight woman, I know that Ronaldo is not really, remotely interested, I'm married anyway, but he's not remotely interested in ladies. And I just think it's amazing that, um, I don't know, I love him, because it must be hard, because clearly to me he is gay, and I think like every, it's an open secret in the football world, and it must be, he must be under tremendous pressure to be one of the world's finest football players and not be able to come out. But no, everybody knows anyway. But I think it's great. I think he's wonderful. And I hope that he does... I could be completely wrong. If Ronaldo isn't gay, then he's the campus straight man on the planet. But I, I do hope that soon, and before the peak of his career, he has... I mean, it's nobody's business to out anybody. But I hope he has the courage, because it will really, really make football less homophobic. But what if he isn't? Thing. You've just you've just, you've just outed him in a way that's not... He's not everybody knows Ronaldo's gay. You think so? That picture of him two summers ago where... Fialis doesn't think so, and she's Portuguese. I'm sorry, but he is. He is. He never has a girlfriend. And two summers ago, there was that picture of him wearing basically George Michael's shorts from the Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go video with a pink flower in his hair, and he's like... He had a camel toe. <laughs> According to Giraffe on a Stick, he has a girlfriend. No. Come on. No, he's not. He's not. Well, maybe he is. And good luck to him. I'm not trying to make a straight man gay, but to me... It's so obvious, and I just think it would be a good thing for football if one of the finest footballers in the world right now was able to, or he had the courage, or he decided at some point, because I think it would really make a difference. Fialis knows a friend, and, and Ronaldo isn't, apparently. Yeah. I've heard from so many sources that he is, though. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, well. Well, back onto a musical thing. I'll, I'll, yeah, but, but, I'll well, before, I wanted to, before I go, I wanted to, before I go, before I carry on, I, I do listen to Five Live, and I know that some people find it really strange because not many women do. But let me put this to you: um, I listen to all radio, but Radio Two, which I love, obviously because it plays not just because it plays my music, but it plays the kind of music I'm really into. The shocking thing about Radio Two is there is not a female presenter on that station during the week from 7.30 in the morning till Jan Long's show at midnight. Not at all. None of the main anchors are female. Or Asian, or black, which, which again, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you have to do that, but I think it's an interesting reflection. The flip side is Radio 5 Live, which is primarily aimed at men who like sport, or people who like sport, but pr probably their main audience is male have two to three female presenters in prime slots. Victoria Derbyshire doing the main morning slot, Gabby Logan doing one of the main afternoon slots. Um, was Kirsty Gallagher pop up on it as well? I'm not sure. But there's lots of female voices and main anchors that are women. Uh, you see, Jack's saying that a senior football executive says that no one wants to hear about sports from women, and I think that's not true. No, Jack thinks nonsense. it's not true as well. I it's think nonsense. it's quite cool. I mean, people are, I know that Gabby Logan kind of stuffed it singing that awful version of 162, 64 to Fabio. 62. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe I got a Beatles title wrong. But Gabby Logan has an incredible pedigree. Her dad is Terry Yorith, who was, uh, well, he was a Welsh team coach, wasn't he? He was a very famous footballer. Uh, her husband's Kenny Logan. He's a, a rugby Scottish international. 
you know, she's in the thick of it. She's grown up with sport. She went every weekend as a kid. You know, she's seen more football than most blokes will ever see, frankly. And she talks about it authoritatively, and she knows what the offside rule is. Um, and Victoria Derbyshire, again, really intelligent, really bright. Um, and I think that, that a lot of other radio stations are missing a trick because they seem to put on these women who are just token, just... And I'm sorry, she's probably a really sweet girl, but people like Fern Cotton do not do females any good in broadcasting because it's sort of dumbed down. She's probably really, really bright, but she's probably told to be a bit more... I don't know. Anyway, that's my thing for the day, so that's why I really like Five Live because it does actually appeal to me, because I like hearing female voices that are talking about something that isn't shoes and handbags, but <laughs> something actually quite interesting to me. ES, ES Music's asked this quite often, so I'm going yeah. to speak up for him. How would you recommend that young song, songwriters would get their music out there and heard? He is currently using YouTube. I think that's uh, an amazing... Yeah, absolutely, YouTube. I mean, I use it, and it's... A great way of getting your music out in an immediate way. Um, oh, it's a girl. I'm sorry. Yes, music is a girl. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Yes, music. YouTube's great. Um, are you playing proper? Sh like, do you go to open mic nights and play proper live? I mean, like live in the space with people around you rather than on the internet, because that's another way to hone your craft and to get an immediate response. Um, a few, but not as often as she'd like to. Yeah, it, the more you can do that, the better, because I think it, what, what it gives you is a really, an immediate sense. YouTube, I mean, streaming's good, because we're, we're having a real-time convo here, but YouTube... And so also, since you've been talking, remote. your audience has doubled. That's interesting. <laughs> Normally, while I'm talking, my audience dwindles. But tonight, your audience has doubled since you started doing Christian <laughs> answers. <laughs> I don't really trust funny. this audience thing, it seems weird to me. <laughs> it's lots of Gabby Logan and Victoria Derbyshire fans. Of mm. well, as soon as you start talking about Ronaldo, actually, it just starts to go for it. I love Ronaldo. We'll start playing songs and it will just go back down again. I tell you what, it's interesting that Man U <laughs> couldn't win anything this year without him. It, well, yeah. And Rooney, I think, may have peaked already. If he doesn't pull his socks up in time for Wednesday, I think they would just as much sell him. Wednesday. Um, any lyric writing tips from Joe? Read books. Read books. Read as many books, different books. For Christmas, my bless my lovely husband, who a lot of you know, he um, he spent a fortune on lots of fancy things, but the one thing he bought me that I've loved is well done, it cost you a fiver. Yeah. He went on eBay and he bought me a, like a like a lucky dip of books, like a big cardboard box of books for a fiver. Some of them were absolutely rubbish, like Daniel Steele, but in there was some David Lodge, um, there's like some... David yeah. Copperfield was in there. Yeah, David Copperfield, some Sherlock Holmes, some classics, Anna Karenina, Clive James, I discovered that I really loved Clive James writing, I'd only ever known him as a presenter, I had no idea that he was a really great essayist and a great novelist, um, and five coins, <laughs> and it's kept me quiet all year since Christmas, hasn't it? Well, Vaz has pointed out it's the best way to get stuff off eBay. Job lots, he's so Job right. Lots, it really is. It's like, and you don't know, it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? It's really fun. Um, George wants to know if you're going to perform Aphrodite in the future for everyone. <laughs> I will do those songs definitely, but they need to go out and and have their life with the person who they're meant for right now. But um, I am very tempted on my next record to maybe do a version of something. I don't know. Maybe it's like a b-side or as a you know an extra because they're fun you know i'm really proud of those songs but um but no not not for the time being they don't belong to me anymore <gasps> um have you written any instrumentals no but you want me to <laughs> you might and inadvertently have started a little <laughs> i'm going to get an earful when i go home it's about something completely different would you ever consider writing a song on gay rights? Man from Tavistock asking. Well, I'm not gay, so that feels a bit like me jumping a bandwagon that doesn't belong to me, that I can't really relate to. Um, well, I can relate to it. I mean, it's necessary. I can't even believe that in 2010 we're asking for equality for people who just happen to love the same sex. That's the only difference. Because, God, we, we haven't quite evolved yet. Um, uh, not because I don't agree with it, I'm very pro-gay rights, I'm just not gay, so I, I think it would be wrong. 
Um, what and uh, you know, I think think somebody like Lady Gaga is interesting, and that's the reason why she's really connecting. In possibly a way Madonna didn't, um, is that Lady Gaga is bi. So I think when she talks about those things and she addresses some of it in her songwriting, um, it, it's got more weight because it's somebody who actually li understands it instinctively. Well, you, you're now, I don't know now, but you are, you are uh, Laurentian TTT's new gay icon. I mean, <laughs> oh, thank and, and Edgar you. as well. That's good. <laughs> thank you. Well, 